Bend the knee. A maester of the Citadel, chained and sworn, sworn brother of the Night's Watch, ever faithful. He was the blood of the dragon. Now his flame has gone out, and now his watch has ended. What's going on, everybody? This is Don Willie. Back, freezing again, <laughs> to talk to you about Maester Aemon, also known as Aemon Targaryen. Now, this is a very uh, interesting character in the series because he was part of the royal Targaryen family during a time when there were a multitude of Targaryens. He is the third son of King Makor I, a younger brother to Arian Targaryen, also known as Arian Brightflame, uh, an older brother of Aegon V, also known as Egg, who we know from the Hedge Knight series with Sir Duncan the Tall. So, Maester Aemon uh, was someone who, after his father died, uh, was in line of succession to be king, and he chose to give up his right to be king and stay a maester, and then uh, after that joined the Night's Watch, and he was sent there with his great uncle, Brendan Rivers, and um, we're not exactly sure why it is that he chose to go to the Night's Watch instead of be king of Westeros, as was his right. Uh, now, if you're a show watcher, it might seem as though uh, the cause of that may have been Olena Tyrell. Uh, you know, she talks about uh, doing some things with a Targaryen prince. Aemon talks about how he had a love once and she basically played him and, you know, gets into that whole thing with Sam where he's like, oh, you, you think that I can, you know, be a maester, but, you know, I can't have, uh, have had love or whatever it was, and, um, you know, I wish, I, I do hope that we actually get to see more of Eamon, he is the only character from A Song of Ice and Fire from the main series who has died of extreme old age, because in the book, he's, I believe, a little over 100 years old, and, you know, while uh, Hostet Tully has died of uh, old age, or not old age, but natural causes, uh, you know, Aemon Targaryen is a, a great bit older than Hostet Tully was. And also, another thing about it is, you know, as much as this is a fantasy series, this is also a war story. And with so much death going on around Aemon that has to do with battle, he is one of the few people who has not died as a result of battle, of any reason. You know, um, again, him being a maester for the Night's Watch pretty much meant that when it came to doing ranging or, or any kind of uh, warrior type things, that he was pretty much immune from that. He didn't have to worry about uh, going to fight the wildlings, and no one was really expecting him to. That wasn't his job. His job was keep records, uh, heal the sick, and you know make sure that the castle ran in smooth order under, you know, whoever the Lord Commander was at that time. And, you now we get to see him throughout the series where he's giving John a lot of good advice, as well as Samuel Tarly. He's grooming Samuel Tarly to kind of take his place at some point because, you know, again, this man is extremely old. At this point, he's blind. And, you know, people 
know that he's on his way out, so sooner or later, somebody is going to have to replace him, and he did a good job in picking Sam. Now, we've seen he is very perceptive when it comes to uh, character traits about people as to whether or not they are people to be trusted or not. Uh, one person who he definitely does not trust is Melisandre. He can tell that there's something up with her, but he doesn't know exactly what it is. And, you know, again, we not only see him in this series and the main the Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, but we do get a brief appearance from him in the Hedge Knight series, uh, the Tales of Dunkin' Egg, when, you know, they happen to run into him when he's 10 years old at this point, and Aegon is running around with Sir Duncan the Tall, uh, you know, and I believe they run into him uh, just after stopping the second Blackfire Rebellion. And, you know, it's said that he was pretty much sent to the Citadel to be a maester because, you know, at that point, seeing how there were so many uh, Targaryens in succession and after the first Blackfire Rebellion, they didn't really want another war for succession. So they were trying to, you know, ferry out all the various uh, princes and princesses uh, to have them do stuff. So this way, whoever was supposed to be next in line would be next in line. And in fact, Makar wasn't supposed to be the king. Uh, after a trial of seven, uh, he wound up accidentally killing his older brother, Baylor Targaryen, also known as Baylor Breakspear, and that uh, existentially put him in line to be the king. Um, you know, I really wish that uh, we could get to see Aemon in his younger days. I hope that we do get to find out if it was, in fact, Elena Tyrell who broke his heart and basically drove him to go to the wall. Uh, you know, we might never find that one out, but uh, who knows, right? We, we might get the answer to that one day. I hope we do, because I think that would be a very interesting uh, angle to explore. Like, you know, what could a woman do to a man that would make him say, you know, fuck it, I don't even want to be the king. I don't want to be around any of this. I'd rather just <laughs> go live you know, in, in solitude and basically being kind of a glorified, glorified librarian. But, um, you know, as they say in the watch, we should never see his like again. And now his watch is ended. Rest in peace, Eamon Targaryen, Maester Eamon. And, uh, remember, he wasn't the last. There are more Targaryens out there, and I'm going to talk about that in a later video. Anyway, that's been my time. Don Willie, I'm out. Yeah.